Hi, today we're going to talk about uh, importing an image from a file and using the Bezier tool to create a template from that and from there we're going to move into 3D. Uh, we're going to be using the cabriole leg as an example so let's get started on that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import here and I'm going to pull up cabriole leg. I pulled this out of a out of a fine woodworking article. I just place it at the origin. I don't worry too much about the size right now. Uh, I'm going to use take the standard top view here. And I know from the article that one of these grid lengths is one inch. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize the whole thing. I'm going to hit the tape measure tool. And let's pick, say, a line that's four grid lengths long. And then I'm going to type four inches. Hit enter. Ask me if I want to resize the model. I'm going to say yes. And what that has done is that has rescaled this image so that um, it's actual size. From here, I'm going to start tracing around this, this leg. So I'm going to start with the line tool because I'm going to start with these parts that I know quite well. All right, that are, we, we know they're horizontal and diagonal lines. Like that. At this point, I've moved to a, uh, a curve. So I'm going to have to use my Bezier tool. I go up here to draw, and I got Bezier curves. Now this this Bezier is uh, tool is part of the Bezier.rb uh, plugin that you can download directly from the SketchUp site. If you look at the Ruby plugins examples, this is one of the examples. I do suggest that you get it. It's pretty simple, uh, but it's not very confusing comparatively. All right, so to do a busy, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a single curve, and you're going to be a little confused, but you'll know what you're looking for when I go to explain it if I do one first. So let's see. I'm going to click an endpoint. I'm going to click another endpoint. I'm going to click that tangent and I'm going to click that tangent. Okay. So that was a little confusing because out of nowhere. But let me show you what I'm doing. <clears throat> let's see. I want to go over this curve, say up to up to here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by clicking, well, this is a four-click tool, so I click once for the first endpoint. I click a second time for a second endpoint. All right, now here's where it gets a little confusing. I have to click a third time, and that's going to control the tangent of the curve at the first endpoint, the starting point. So I line it up so the direction of the curve is close to the direction of the curve on uh, the picture. So I click once. Then I come up here. Now I've got to control the tangent on the second curve. All right. And the further I pull it out, the stronger that tangent is. It can push the other, uh, can push the curve around more. So I try and choose one that's that's somewhere in the middle. That's pretty good. Okay, good. And I just keep connecting them together. I'm only going to do the curved parts here. All right, now I chose the first one too large. That's not good. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm going to click on that with my left mouse button. I'm going to right click. I'm going to edit the, that bezier. And you can see here now that I can move. I can drag these points around. There we go. And that was the, the end point of the, the first tangent. That was my third click right there. Here, this would be if I want to move that second one. Okay, pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to go back to my Bezier tool. Something's happened to my... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my line tool. Something's happened to my a screen and turning green on the borders, but that's probably the video recording tool, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. 
Continuing on with these straight lines. All right, back to my Beze tool. Clicking an endpoint. Now I try and take the largest part of an arc that I can reasonably take and still get a good uh, curve. And you'll get better at that. Now, don't line it up exactly like that because you'll see down here on the bottom part of that curve, there's no way I'm going to fit that in. You have the third, you're on your third click here, that second, fourth click is going to change it a lot, so account for that. Click, and click. See, I use that fourth click to pull that back, that curve the rest of the way onto the, the line that I'm trying to create. And that, that that touch comes with usage. Okay, so what we've done is we've created an outline around this whole thing. Now I can actually get rid of the picture. And I have this um, 2D template to work with. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull it out into 3D. Then I'm going to, um, let's see, what's my camera here? I'm in perspective. Good. That'll be fine for now, but I'm going to move to something else soon. All right. I have this 3D version. I'm going to triple click on it. I'm going to make it a group. Um, let's see here. Once I have a group, I'm going to rotate this group in place, making a copy. Somewhere from the middle of it works well. The See that? And I want to go 90 degrees exactly. And what I really want is this piece of intersection in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move in to one of these groups. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to make sure that my hidden geometry is on. Now I'm going to intersect faces with model. All right. What that just did is that that created edges all through here, all right, and planes between them. So let me show you what I mean. Under view, component, hide rest of model, and see those edges that were just created. <clears throat> all right. So I'm going to drag left over this part and get rid of it, and I'm going to drag left over this part and get rid of it. And look what I'm left with. I'm left with these pieces. What I want to do is I want to select all of them, copy them. I just hit Control C to copy. In fact, now I can get rid of that group. Here, I'm going to take the other group. I'm going to explode it. What that just did is that got rid of the group context. And then finally, I'm going to paste in place. I have a shortcut for this. All right, now that I have pasted that in place, I can come over here and I can drag around this piece here. I can drag around this piece here and delete those. And I'm left with this cabriole leg. Uh, once I turn off hidden geometry, it's going to look a lot better. Okay, so there's my leg. Now that I have it, first thing I'm going to do, triple click, group, and call it cabriole leg. All right. That's all there is to it. Thanks.